Good morning everybody, Chris again, uh, nice to see you all back, thanks for watching my videos, uh, the count's going up a little bit, a few more subscribers so thank you very much for that and thanks for clicking on this video. So today it's only just going to be a short one, just an infill, I'm having a weekend off of filming, so I'm down there caravan all hallows, but there's a few little interesting bits I'm just going to grab on film for you. So yeah, hopefully uh, you enjoy it and there's uh, quite a tale to tell, so right, let's go and uh, See what we can see, see what we can find. A long way from home. On Monday the 19th of June 1944, a formation of a 30 American B-17 Flying Fortress Bombers from the 525th Squadron 379th Bombardment Group was returning from a mission against V-1 launching sites in northern France. Most of them had taken hits and a few of them were flying home with smoking engines, but one of them in particular had been very badly damaged by the German flak for the pilot of the aircraft. Second Lieutenant Armand John Rasmiti. This was the first combat mission and he was already in trouble. Flying close to his section lead, he was having a great deal of difficulty controlling his stricken bomber, but they were now only 15 minutes away from their base in the north at Kim Bolton and he was determined they would make it. He'd already lost one of his four engines. Now, as the formation neared All Hallows in North Kent, another engine was given up. Already desperately resting with the bomber's flat base controls, it was the last thing he needed. Jockeying the throttles on his remaining engines, he was trying to somehow compensate for the drop in power when, without warning, his B 17 side slipped sickly to starboard, literally dropping out of his hands and collided with the aircraft on his section leader. As the two planes separated, Ramissi's aircraft turned upside down, lost its port wing, and went straight down into the muddy waters of the Thames estuary. Only one of the nine crew members survived. The Bombardier Second Lieutenant Theo Chronopolis. The plane crashed 500 yards off the seafront at All Hallows. All but one of the crew's bodies were later recovered and they were later interred in the American cemetery at Maddingley, Cambridgeshire. Only that the flight engineer top gunner, Staff Sergeant Cecil Tosgani, remains missing, more than likely still trapped in the wreckage of the bomber out there in the soft Thames mud. The section leader's plane came down across the water at Canvey Point in Essex and six of the crew survived. There is a memorial to them at Canvey, but Ramisi and his crew had no such memorial where their plane crashed until now. Ramisiti and his crew never had time to name their aircraft nor to have their official crew photograph taken. The fact that they died after attacking the launching sites of the dreaded doodlebugs means that they were potentially protecting British homes that afternoon. Second Lieutenant Armand J. Ramasiti and the crew of B-17G Serial 44-6133 are a long way from their home. We cannot remedy that, but we can acknowledge their effort and remember their sacrifice. Alright, so it's our little walk done for the day, so I'm going to go down to the camp shop now, get a nice bit of ice cream. I do like a bit of ice cream. Alright, speak soon everyone, see you later, bye now.